Um, you've got a, a, a very important story, Dave, regarding the Canberra Raiders as we kick things off. Yeah, guys, just breaking on the Telegraph website as we speak is uh, news of a formal offer, uh, a contract offer for Jack White and from the Canberra Raiders. This is their first official offer made to Jack since he announced la this time last week uh, that he was putting himself on the open market. It's a four-year deal worth around $4.4 million. Uh, it's a significant play by the Raiders. They said they were going to go out swinging and, and have a big crack to try and keep their man, and they've certainly done that, um, uh, as I said, by submitting that formal offer to Jack's management today. Do they need to pay that much? Do you think, what do you think of that, Kenny? It's a lot of uh, money for a player they already have. Well, Parramatta just paid a little bit more for Mitch Moses. They already had him. So it depends which way you look at it. I just think that, yes, it's a lot of money. Uh, but is there a market? There was a market well, for Moses. Is there that same market for, well, the for is, White? Well, the issue is, that there, is there a, a better, bigger offer mm. for White? And it doesn't appear that way. There's a few clubs I'm led to believe that are interested in him. Uh, obviously, the Dolphins are interested. They've spoken to him, I'm led to believe, uh, as well as the Warriors and the Bulldogs mm. have, have spoken to him. Uh, or have shown at least interest in him. So uh, no, t no offers tabled there yet from those other clubs. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Of course, last night we talked about Canberra and they're an ageing squad and they've got their issues. It seems like they've decided they, they just cannot afford to lose Jack. I'd be shocked if there's another club out there willing to pay four years, $4.4 .4 million for Jack Whiten as a 30-year-old player. But to the Raiders, he's worth every penny. And the reason why he's worth every penny is because right now he's the glue to that team. Mm. And if they lose him, they'll struggle to get as good a player to replace him. Mm. That's why he's worth the money. And you build the team around him. He's been a great player for the club, but the club's been great to him. That's, that's more than a fair offer. I hope it doesn't drag out like the Moses situation. Yeah, did. and that's, that, that's certainly key. Uh, I would think in the back of Jack's mind, knowing that the Mitch Moses contract situation dragged on, so too did Cameron Munster. I don't think he wants to go down that path knowing that your reputation can take a hit as a result of dragging that out. The Dolphins' interest is interesting. Wayne Bennett's on the record that he's willing to go to that million-dollar mark for, for Jack. And in the back of the Dolphins' mind, guys, is that they did miss Kalen Ponga and Cameron Munster. They do have money in their cap mm. to get a big name, a big marquee, uh, and Jack's certainly on their radar. Wasn't there a suggestion that they wanted him as a centre and that the clubs that were interested in yep. Jack were more interested in him as a centre yep. than, than a 5-8. And obviously, centre is not going to get 4.4 for four. Yeah, well, that's true, Dan. And given that the Dolphins have Isaiah Katoa on contract uh, for several, uh, at least two more seasons, Sean O'Sullivan in the halves still on contract, Anthony Milford is on contract next year as well, and so too is Cody Nicarima. So there's actually four halves at the Dolphins already. They've bought Herbie Farmworth. Big bucks from the Broncos to play in the centres. And Tabby Eifert has really come on as a, as a fullback too. So yeah. if you think you could slot him in there, you'd start to look at Tabby Eifert. who would be on, you'd think, much less. Yeah. And think as far as value for money goes, you'd stick there. I guess the other side of the argument too for, for Jack Whiten would be, does he believe he can win at Canberra? Like everyone wants to win a competition. And I have no doubt in the world the other clubs, when they talk to him will be selling the message. Do you think you can win there? Do you think we, we think we can win with you? And that's the decision yeah, but that... But, but, but that's the decision Jack has to make, isn't if it? If it's the Dolphins, the Warriors and... Bulldogs. Bulldogs, then they're all coming from outside the eight in the past however many years. Obviously, Dolphins are a new club, but... <laughs> you and I both know when Bennett sits down and talks to Jack White and face-to-face, -face, that's the message he'll sell him. No doubt. But, but they're not... But in reality, reality, that will come down to what Jack believes is best for his career. Because I, I truly believe he's got the right to make his call at this stage, given the service he's given that club. Yeah, I understand. Like he's been there since, what, but 15 being, years of age? OK, but, but being realistic, the Dolphins aren't winning the cop calls. No, probably not. But do you think Wayne's going to sell that message? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, we talked about it last night, Kenny. Um, <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to believe it. <laughs> they, That's what um, I'm saying. It's up, for, it's up for him what he believes. They, uh, There's been a, a lot of players go since... Well, even the last couple of years, but certainly since, what, 2019. I mean, we're, we're talking here. We're not far away from a rebuild. So, I mean, what are the prospects of Canberra?
uh, being a serious challenger if yeah, he stays. Well, well, that's yeah. Look, that's the players that are no longer there since 2019. The thing about Canberra too, and I said this last night, when, where it started to go wrong against Penrith, and, and they were extremely poor in that second half. But where it went wrong was the decision makers in the spine are, are, are all quite young. Mm. Yeah, you know, I'd rather than say they're an ageing roster. I'd say that I nearly go the other way and actually say that they're actually quite young in mm. many of that. Certainly in the key areas. And without Jack there at five eight, they've got. Mm. You know, like Fogarty's not a young player, okay, but he's not a. He's never been a, a top shelf. He's, 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 he's reasonably he's experienced. Shelf, fair, and he's he? never been a top shelf halfback. But they had a rookie hooker and they had a rookie. They've got centre play and fullback. They've, the spine was not a mm. experienced, well entrenched spine. And once the momentum started to go against them, there was no one there who knew how to get them out of that trouble. Mm. The concern and, and was that Penders there was some on. senior play, Rapana made some really critical errors in that game, and yeah. that, that's what let them down. The, yeah. they're, they're missing Denny Levi, of course, their, their first choice hooker. Mm. Xavier Savage, Jack wasn't there. There's there's three well, and key spine outs. Players. And I thought three in the first players. half there was, you know, that, there was some real exciting attack from them, but they just they fell to pieces. Well, they seem to be at both ends. They seem to be a team that, that, that the younger players are still probably in another 30, 40 games of first grade mm. to sort of set, mm. to bed themselves down. But then at the other end, they've got, they're guys who are pretty much nearing the end of their careers. Like, they've got... Croker in, is he's playing back, yeah. State Cup at the moment. Well, you know? he's back to week. be fair, Ken, he's been recalled this week. Yeah. And I think that speaks to your belief about the inexperience. Yeah. And maybe Croker is an acknowledgement that they need a little bit of leadership. Well, they, they do, Dave. Yeah. They, yeah, they, like they were terrible over the weekend, All right. last Friday. So this deal is obviously they want to lock him up straight away. Not just sign him, I but sign they him quickly. Him, Dan. They, look, they know they need him. They, they, they value him. Loyalty, I, like I don't buy into all this loyalty stuff. Of, you know who owes who. You know you, you you get paid a day's wage for for a day's work. Okay, it, he's got plenty of value out of the, what Canberra have paid him, and Canberra got plenty out of what they've given him to to in return and ask for it. So who knows? You know, like he doesn't know anybody. Canberra don't know him. If he wants to go elsewhere, go, good luck to him. But Canberra, they've acknowledged how much they need him by the size of the offer that they've already mm. tabled. Does he sign, Crawls? Will he sign? Yeah. I'd be shocked if you could knock that money back. I can't see the, I can't see the Dolphins offering him that much money to play centre. I can't see the Bulldogs offering him near that much money to go and play lock. He's not going to put Matt Burton out of the 5'8 spot, is he? No, well... Like, I, I, the the Dogs need a half-back. Is lock at the Dogs, yeah. Yeah. You think they, he owes them? No, I don't. I think, I think, as Kenny said, he's been there since he was 15. He's been good for the club. The club's been good for him. But we see players, at, at that age of your career, if you feel like you're, you want to change, you're entitled to make the change, but that's more than a fair offer.